thanks everybody for being here. It's already been wonderful. The small reception yesterday, the meetings this morning. There's so many old friends and I know new friends who were meeting, but also who are meeting each other. And really that's what this, this whole um, day and, and everything that's going to come after that is going to be about. How do we create a network? How, do, how are we strong together? So I'm going to talk about the why. And I think it's really important that we have a few key words. For me, the two key words for today are collaboration and generosity. I, want, I think I want to go beyond collaboration a little bit and start talking together about what generosity means and why we need it. So the biggest why, the answer to the why, is in the global challenges. I'm sure you've all seen these pictures many, many times. I think they're very inspirational. It's only been seven years since these new development goals have been adopted by the United Nations, and only five years since they actually had very clear outcome measures that we're striving towards reaching by 2030. And of course, there's a recognition that probably none of them will actually be reached by 2030. But we're moving in the right direction, much though there's still a lot of work to be done. We actually are moving in the right direction. So the foundations are very strong and we just need to build on them. So no poverty, just to remind ourselves that about 10% of the global population live on or be below the poverty line. And that means they struggle on a daily basis to find food, to find shelter, to feed their families. Half of the group of people who are below the poverty line, which is over 700 million, are children. And from my own professional background, growing up healthy is such an important uh, step to becoming healthy adults who can actually participate in society and help solve the global problems and the challenges. Uh, zero hunger, and um, we still have one in nine people who are hungry, who don't know for sure that they'll have food on, on any given day. And that, of course, absolutely needs to change. And there are a few others that are very close to my heart. Um, health, of course, is one that I think is close to all our hearts. That's one where absolutely strides have been made. So the infant mort or the mortality for under fives has been halved since the year 2000 by 47, almost halved, 47 percent lower than it was. It still means that we have a lot of work to do because we still have six million children under five dying every year, mostly from absolutely preventable causes. But we shouldn't forget that we actually are really moving in the right direction. Quality education, of course, is very close to all our hearts. Only 7% of the global population have a college degree, and we need many more highly trained people to help us with all these issues. But maybe the one closest to my heart for today is number 17, the partnerships for the goals. And that's where I think we can come in as universities. And in the partnership for the goals, if you go online and look at how the UN is, is phrasing it, they are talking about relentless collaboration. They are talking about countries working together, but also industry working together with universities, knowledge producing uh, institutions working together. And I think that's what we're doing today. We're focusing on number 17. And of course, they're all interconnected and they're all all these issues hit the global south so much more than the global north. So I also want us to focus on generosity, really literally, globally. So what, what can we do and what can we conclude from this first slide? I think global challenges clearly require comprehensive solutions. They can't be fixed just by engineers or people in the STEM fields. We need to think about bringing all the different disciplines together. I think we, we actually need to move beyond interdisciplinarity to transdisciplinarity, finding different cutting edge research fields where we bring all these colleagues together, understand human behavior and culture and politics and work together with the engineers and the people who can bring technical solutions. But please, let's be evidence-based. There is no time to waste. And any non-evidence-based intervention will cost time, will cost lives, uh, will make people disgruntled and feel like it's never going to work. And that's, I think, where universities have to come in, to focus on absolutely evidence-based everything, from policy to technical interventions and everything in between. And it needs to be inclusive. We can't just focus on a small part of the population, on ourselves. We need to think about the entire population, the global population, and maybe the planet more broadly. It's not just about humans on the planet. This is really about life on, on Earth that we're talking about. I'm convinced that networked and collaborative universities probably are the 
the best placed institutions to tackle this because we're so outward facing by nature. We're so used to working with colleagues all over the world. We have all that knowledge that we need. So we can be hugely influential through our research, but let's please not forget the teaching. We're training the next generation of global leaders, of people who need to do this long after we retired. And that's a legacy that we should be so focused on and so proud of. And our societal impact can be enormous, both local, national, but also global. And for me, local and global are almost undistinguishable. But to have that mindset, we need to be very strategic and focused. And we need to know why, why we want this. So today really is about the why. And I think universities are superbly placed to do good, to do good for the world, to literally save lives and change our planet. But we can also do well. It doesn't mean that, that we have to spend too much of our money or we will become institutions that aren't stable and sustainable. They really can go hand in hand. But it means we need to be very strategic. And again, there's no time to waste, there's no money to waste, there's no human effort to waste. And we need to work together to sink strategically and to hold on to each other and make sure as a group we're less vulnerable if we want to go out and do things differently and be bold and daring because we need to be bold. So I'm going to make a plea today in my introduction to be radically collaborative and, and I mean really radically collaborative in everything. Collaboration needs to be our default and only if that doesn't work and it, I think it will always work maybe we can go back to thinking about being on our own, but it needs to be the default and it isn't at the moment. But in order to be radically collaborative, we need to also be values-based. We need to feel why, what our values are. On one of my next slides, I'll show you the new University of Leeds values that we want to live by and really have in our hearts on our day-to-day -day business. It also means we need to change the definition of success in research and teaching. It can no longer be comparing ourselves to others, being the best, winning. It needs to be focused on what we want to do together and the why that we're talking about. And it also means a relentless focus on reducing inequalities because the 17 sustainable development goals, the biggest issue underlying all of them is the growing global inequalities. And if we can close that gap, we'll probably have solved most of the global challenges at the same time. And the growing inequalities are in the way of solving any one of the global challenges. So we need to think about that in everything we do. And it also means a different way of, of societal engagement. So we need to create maximum impact regionally, nationally and globally. And we need to do it together. And of course, we've already started, but we can take it to the next level. And I think this meeting and this movement is going to place us all superbly to really do that. So Knowledge Equity Network, you've, you've all been able to read it and probably you're here because you've been inspired by, by our vision and our mission. It's to tackle the unprecedented challenges facing our planet. And of course, every time is unprecedented, but in terms of climate change and the really major issues, I, I think we can say these are unprecedented <coughs> challenges facing our planet. And we need to build a collaborative community across institutions individuals and nations and change the way we share knowledge and resources. And I think we can all be behind this. So I want to spend a few minutes with all of you to think about relentless competition. My next slide will focus on collaboration and how that makes us feel and how it makes us feel as institutions, maybe even as countries, but also as individuals, because it needs to start with us. It really needs to start at home. So if we're very competitive, and I think in academia, we've gotten used to it, we're just normalizing it. We even think it's a road to excellence. It makes us feel that we, in order to get what we think we need, we need to win. There's always this element of someone threatening us, maybe even in our sort of existential needs. And what a terrible existence that is, what a terrible existence we've built for ourselves. It's, it's implicitly and explicitly means we always have to measure ourselves against others. Because if you're competitive, it means you have to look at the competition and see what they're doing. So measuring your, yourself against yourself isn't good enough. You always have to look over your shoulder and around you to see what others are doing. It makes us very anxious about the future. Because if you feel like you can be threatened in what you truly need by others, your future feels very insecure and feels very uncertain. 
It also makes you feel isolated as people, as institutions, because you, you have yourself, you need to build this, this layer of defense around you. So by definition, you can't be open, you can't be trusting, you can't be generous, because you need to always be on the lookout. It makes you protective of what you have, because you don't want to lose it, you need to hold on to it. So your interests, your status, your possessions, whether that's your publications, your money, um, your status, you need to be really hanging on to it. And of course, that makes us very defensive. And depending on our inclination, it often makes us really aggressive because we feel like we have to be preemptive to make sure that everything that we need to be happy and to survive doesn't get taken from us. I don't think it's a very good existence. I don't think it's a way to be happy. Uh, but I, even worse, I don't think it's any way to, to focus on what our planet need, needs, what other people need, what our global population needs. So by contrast, how does radical collaboration make us feel? How does it feel when you know you're, you're in a group and you're not by yourself? I think it makes us confident that what we truly need is available and that there always will be opportunities to, to get what, what we need to 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 survive, to, to be happy, um, to be the people we want to be. It makes us focused on living our own best work lives, but maybe lives in general, instead of constantly looking at what other people are doing and feeling insecure and insignificant, to feeling like we need to do more to be where they are, wherever that is. It makes us much more secure about our future, because if we're together with others, and if our existential needs can be met without going into this, this fighting mode, of course the future is more secure, because what could possibly go wrong? Actually, nothing. It makes us feel connected, and it makes us feel, and that may be the most important thing for today, that our best team effort is good enough, and we don't constantly need to feel like we need to do better to achieve what we should achieve. So this perfectionism, I think, that's built into academia is very much linked to the sense of competition and constantly having to fight for your existence. It also makes us generous. It makes us much more likely to give what we have and what we don't absolutely need at a minimum because we're more aware of what we don't need. I think generosity actually teaches us what we don't need. If we're generous, we'll realize that we need much less than we maybe think we're needing. And it makes us much more compassionate. And if there's anything that the world needs, is a compassionate attitude of all of us. So I, I want to make a plea for moving away from the sense that we need to be hyper competitive to excel, to do our best work. The University of Leeds values that were adopted last year, I'm really proud of them. They're the underpinning of our strategy, which is also very focused on sustainable development goals and everything we're talking about today. And they are, as you can see on the screen, collaboration, compassion, inclusivity and integrity. Maybe those last two are less um, un, un, uh, infrequent in academia, but I think collaboration and compassion as core values. That doesn't happen a lot. I haven't seen that a lot in colleague universities. And I think it's really important for how we want to move forward to be relentlessly collaborative, but to also be extremely compassionate and be caring and considerate in everything we do, also inside our own university, but also, of course, in how we treat others. So I want to put this in front of you, maybe to stew over today and later in the workshops. And maybe everybody who's here today has already decided with me this, but I think it's important to say it out loud. And I feel very strongly that if healthy competition ever existed in academia, if there's even such a thing as healthy competition, we've collectively moved so far beyond it. And the consequences are really severe for all of us in our daily work lives, but also for our communities, local, national, global, and for the world. We're, we're losing lives, literally, because we're so competitive with each other. We're losing opportunities to make a huge difference because we're only focused on the competition. And I think the whole notion that's still so prevalent in academia of survival of the fittest, as if that's an evidence-based mode to bring humanity further, I don't know why we don't question it more. And it wasn't even Darwin who coined it, actually. It was some other guy, an economist, who really liked Darwin's notion of the species sort of competing with each other. And he coined survival of the fittest. And Darwin actually was okay with that. 
But the way it was phrased back then, I wrote it down, it's actually really scary. This guy was called Herbert Spencer and he was from Darwin's generation. Um, and he, he said survival of the fittest actually means preservation of the favored race in the struggle for life. So the fact that we even use that term in our daily work is actually awful. And what's, what Victorian age people did, Darwin and Spencer and lots of others, they looked at the awful circumstances in which lots of people lived who moved to the cities, who were working in industry, who didn't have, of course, enough food, whose children were dying. And they were sort of explaining that as the survival, the struggle for survival and sort of a normal way of being. So they were using Darwin's work to explain the terrible situation in Victorian England. And let's please stop doing that together and let's never say that survival of the fittest is why we want to compete and why we feel like we need to be the way we are because that drives excellence. And if you look at modern biology and especially interdisciplinary work where we translate what we see in nature to human behavior, there is overwhelming evidence that humanity is in the, in the good shape it is. Because look at us when we're, we're doing amazing as a species because of our enormous potential for collaboration. Every positive step that humanity has taken is because of relentless collaboration, not because we kill each other when we have a chance. So let's, let's please, as an academic community, question this whole survival of the fittest notion as the best road to excellence, because it's just not true. There's absolutely no evidence for it. And you, know, you can understand the consequences. So we need to urgently, as a community, I'm almost getting to the end of my presentation, redefine our core missions of education, research and societal impact. It doesn't mean we have to go 180 degrees in another direction, because of course, we're all very aware of the power of our education, of this training of the next generation of global citizens. We're aware of the enormous power of the wonderful research we're doing and how it truly can be life changing and, and changing the global challenges. We're, we're very aware of our societal impact, how societies flourish when they have a university in their midst and how we can bring prosperity and all the different meanings of the word. But we need to still redefine it because in most of our core mission, implicit and explicit, there's still that sense that we need to compete. There's still the sense of the rankings and how do we compare ourselves to others. And there are going to be lots of speakers who are fo going to focus on that and how pernicious the effects are of ranking ourselves in our research output. In the way we teach our students, it's still far too much getting the right degree compared to your peers, being better than others. And it's not how the workplace works. Students, when they enter into the workplace, they're not being told by their boss that they need to outsmart their colleagues at the end of the day. They're told to work together, often with people from the humanities if they're engineers. But we need to teach our students that that really is how they want to be. And our students want that. They want the interdisciplinarity. They want the transdisciplinarity. So we need to change the definition of success also in education. And we need to change the definition of success in societal impact. We need to be global. We need to be bold. We need to be daring. And we can do it, especially if we do it together. So this is my last slide. I actually use this for pretty much every presentation I'm doing nowadays. And I really believe it. I think together we really can make the world a better place. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. And I, I can't wait to see the outcome of all of this. Thanks.